<laughs> Welcome to Is Anybody Listening to Me podcast with Azar in the Meat. And we have our special guest, Jarvis, who is already colorfully adding things that Big Meat has to edit before we could even start the podcast. Uh, this episode for you guys, you might want to start fast forwarding because we are going to try to re- re- discuss WrestleMania with these two clowns. And there's only one person in the, uh, that we know that actually listens for wrestling takes. So for the rest of you, just hold on tight because we're going to get to something relevant. Because I just had to sit through 30 minutes of these two clowns pre, pre-game. their are uh, WE uh, talking points, which is frightening. Let me just get this started. Let, the paint, let me rip the Band-Aid off. Let me welcome Big Meat. How's it going, yes, Big Meat? Yes, it's going well. This, is, this one's for you, Wardos, if you're listening out there. This, this is going to be about a two-hour podcast. An hour and 45 minutes of WWE talk. And then the last 15 minutes, whatever Azar wants to talk about. But this one is dedicated for you, Wardos. So this is one of those things that if you know, you can hit the little dot on your iPhone and you can slide to the section that's past all this. It will not go an hour and 45 minutes. And I am dreading any trip with you guys that is going to be nonstop wrestling talk with you two clowns. And it, ironically, you were worried about me and Jarvis being too close to each other and, you know, talking through our whole next trip. And it's going to be you two clowns talking about wrestling the whole time. So I'm going to be by myself staring at the wall. But anyways, Big Me, we have it. Let, let's let's jump in because I wasn't getting a lot of love up from WrestleMania, uh, not only from you guys and your text threads, but also from different talk shows that I listened to. Not a lot of love. They thought they, there wasn't a lot of uh, hype. Or maybe there was hype, but they didn't live up to the expectation of a WrestleMania in the past. So I, here's my take on that. I, I disagree. I thought it was a pretty good WrestleMania. Now, it's got the two-night event, which I'm not a big fan of. I don't like the two-night thing. I like one night, get it all out, and, and it's done with, and, and that's that. Um, the fact that they had fans back in the stands was the highlight for me. That was just that that put it over the top because it's been so long to actually see a live audience. But some of those matches were pretty good. And you know, if you go back and remember to a lot of the past WrestleManias, a lot of the WrestleMania matches turn out to be that way. It's just, you know, it's like okay, like match after match after match. And then you get the one big match, and then it's a kid kind of gets a little dull after a while, and then you end it with the big main event. Those two main events on both those nights were pretty solid, you know, main event matches. So I thought it was pretty good. Travis, what did you think? Okay, well, all that talk. There well, he is. <laughs> I, I, I am here. Listen, I, you know what I was I was stuck contemplating, and, and I, I thought you were going to go on for a little bit. I think this might have been one of the worst WrestleManias of all time. Oh, of all, and like, wow, no way. Could, so, so here's what I'm going to say. I From... The mid 2000s, so like rest, like the WrestleMania in the WrestleMania in the late late 20s, early 30s. I really checked out of as a fan, so there could have been some terrible ones in there. I'm really going from WrestleMania one through 20, and then the last few years. I think this was, and, and I know that WrestleMania nine gets a lot of crap for being terrible. I, I actually didn't think it was that bad. I know the storylines were some of the worst of all time with Bret Hart losing. Was that the losing. one in Caesar's Palace? That's the one in Caesar's, Caesar's Palace. Palace yeah. But, I, you know, I, I mean, they didn't have a – they were in transition there, so they didn't have a ton of great characters. And it was right when they were trying to keep Hogan and give him another push or transfer transition to the younger guy. So, like, wh- whatever. It was kind of in flux. But I look at, the like, the roster now. There's no direction. There's no storylines. There's no, f- like, major feuding. They're just – one month throwing a guy in, throwing him out, changing a title for no reason, changing a title. Yeah, but that's not that's not a WrestleMania uh, thing. That's well, a well, that's a but, WWE but it, thing. Well, what what? But this is like the showcase, right? So if I look at this WrestleMania, you you want that moment to where you be like where you where you watch that WrestleMania. Hogan body slamming Andre was pivotal, right? Macho flying off the elbow, dropping it on Million Dollar Man to win the title. WrestleMania five, like I can go back through WrestleMania is almost one through 20 and give you like a moment. That was like, that match was incredible. And not only did I not get that from this WrestleMania, they gave it to me over two fucking nights and like, it deserves to be sworn at because you're going to pull that crap. Like last year's WrestleMania, I thought was innovative. 
And the, the, for them to spread it out over two nights, it gave you during COVID when you needed something to last, it, it delivered. It delivered the Undertaker match. It delivered the even the stupid John Cena match. At least it had John Cena. Like you were like, all right, I can get behind this. What what did this WrestleMania give you except a bunch of disappointing title matches? Shame the fans back oh. in the stands. That's yeah, what it they, gave you. But but they only they only took the fans into account in the beginning when they brought all the wrestlers out. They thanked them. Like there wasn't there wasn't a fight in the crowd. There wasn't like the moment where like he, did, it, did it build no, up no, no. the energy though? The energy in the in the building. Yeah, but I feel when you're watching on in the TV, stadium, I, I should say. I I feel, I feel like they do a good job pumping in the the crowd audio when when you're watching on Monday Night Raw or SmackDown or whatever. Like you still kind of feel crowd noise. Yeah, but not I not last moved. year's WrestleMania though. No, last year's oh, WrestleMania was so kind of lame. I thought if they no, took I, la- if they took last year's WrestleMania and made it this year's WrestleMania for the fans, I thought it would Brock Lesnar losing to McIntyre. Oh, that was unbelievable. That would have been that, great. That was a three fans. that was a three minute match that it, ended with because Lesnar's of, not talented. Because Lesnar can't wrestle, he's not. Well, not anymore. He used to. Now, not anymore. Now he's just did it for whatever. Yeah, okay, but. I'm gonna do my best to stay on topic. This WrestleMania sucked, and it did not deliver any defining moments. What would have been the defining moment that made this WrestleMania for all of the fans to be back? They were in Florida. They could have had that three-way match there at the end. They could have had The Rock come out and come at Roman Reigns for the head of the table thing drop Roman Reigns and let one of the other two win the title. And that way Roman Reigns didn't lose. The rock came in and gave you that pop. You needed see that, something like but that. See, that. That's, that's you what did, I disagree. And, and this is where Wardos was, which by the way, he's, he's, he's striking out here with all of his uh, WWE predictions this year, because he's, he's always predicting all these crazy things that are going to happen. And they never, none of it ever happens. The outside wrestlers, like the rock, the surprise guests, they never really come in in WrestleMania. Like, when was the last WrestleMania where you saw some surprise wrestler? You see it at Royal Rumble, right? When they come back, like they've been out yeah, for you get 30 a guys couple years or whatever. Through. You see, you see it. Um, you know, in certain, in certain, you never really see it at WrestleMania. And for whatever reason, they probably don't want to take away the spotlight from its current roster, but. That's not going to happen at but WrestleMania. I'm gonna, but I'm going to rebut that point. Take away the spotlight from the current roster. They buried every single one of their rising stars for a bunch of scrubs. Bobby Lashley's not a def, not a, a marketable champion, and they buried Drew McIntyre for him. But I, I think Sheamus, what they're doing oh, with Sheamus Lashley, Bar- I think what they're doing with Lashley with the Hurt Business has been pretty strong. They've but built them up. He wasn't expense. good before, but ever since he's been, not he can't talk. He can't not talk at the on expense the mic. of McIntyre. Not at the McIntyre was too strong a character. Sure, and they buried him. They buried well, him maybe, by maybe, losing to maybe the Miz. They, they yeah. buried. Yeah. Oh, the Miz. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't agree with that. I didn't agree with that match. Yeah, but it so all I'm spills into there. he should have taken it back from Lashley. Yeah, get, Lashley has no business with. Like you, you, you just had the Brock Lesnar's run with Paul Heyman as his talking mouthpiece. Now we're gonna have to deal with Lashley and his stupid face. He might have the uh, the dumbest face in the history of pro sports. And you have somebody like McIntyre that can talk. He's got a little bit of attitude. He was a heel. He's he great. never lost his ad. He was kind of like Stone Cold. How Stone Cold was a bad guy, but was just so loved as a character, kind of put over. And he never changed who he was. McIntyre was the next. He wasn't the next Stone Cold, but he was the next one that was a bad guy that got such a pop for taking down Lesnar because everybody hated Lesnar that McIntyre got put over and they buried him for Lashley. I, I, I think they're building. They've built up Lashley now for quite a while. I don't think Lashley has, has lost a match in in probably a year. He's I mean, he's 60. been he's he's been solid as a uh. villain. As a, as a, he's not, or as a heel, like, I should say, sorry, I got to talk wrestling, wrestling, lingo. heel, heel, but he's not like now he's got the whole, he has the show like the iron Sheik was a champion and he was a heel and you were like, I need him to lose the title. I want to watch every week to see him lose the title. Lashley has the title. I'm like, hey, I'm just indifferent about you. This big jacked up guy that doesn't talk. And when you do, it's like embarrassing. Yeah, but neither but, did neither did Brock Lesnar. And that's why he had Paul Heyman by his side. But I hated Brock Lesnar, too. But at least Brock Lesnar brought the whole MMA thing. And 
you know, like like he she, Ronda Rousey 2.0. Like I I would watch oh, for Ronda La- Rousey. Lashley is not a big a, big a name, but Lashley's a big dude. He could be a frightening heel in WWE, and they wanted to build him up because the whole hurt business kind of took off, and then that that ended up being really good. So I don't have a problem with it as long as I, they don't drag it out for they buried more let, and more they and buried more. they buried McIntyre. They buried. So I don't know what they were doing with Daniel Bryan or Edge to put Roman Reigns over, but they buried those two guys because now there's no no contention there. They buried um, the, the Big E losing to freaking Nigeria. Uh, yeah. I am from Nigeria now. <laughs> I am Nigerian. Oh, <laughs> now you could you could you could tease that. I'm going to fight you in a drum there, fight. There was a, a lot Nigerian of drum fight. Wait a minute. There was a lot of. Crazy wrestlers that acted that same way back in the eighties when we when we loved it the most. I yeah. mean, it, it, that's just all goofy, but like pro- wrestling. But so, but the problem creativity. is, it was the match. The big e, big e was a guy that came. Uh, he was a he was a yeah. Like but a wasn't Kurt that Angle star, right? But wasn't it the guy that came in town? Yeah, but it wasn't a clean win, right? The other guy came in and who's the other guy? What's the point of introducing him? Like, wh- why are you bringing in Colonel Mustafa 2.0? <laughs> what what are we been, doing? I forget his name. I think it's like uh, something Daba. What he's been that's in wrestling fine. before, but he's that's fine. But not at the so they they put down they they put down Big E and took the title from him in his hometown when it was like the time to put him over. If that's fine. I can make a, a Nigerian prince warrior win the title. <laughs> I, that's fine. We can do that. You didn't like the bad bunny, the bad, but that was a nice surprise, you know, coming in a big rap star. Like, yeah, is, he, well, is he considered I, rap? I don't know what, I don't know what he's <laughs> I considered. Know. I it's, hate his music, by the way. I think he's terrible, but, but, but what, he's what, a big what, star. What wasn't bad. Right. His name is all over the place, I guess, but so isn't the Easter bunny. So I don't know. And he, you know, like he he cared. I'm just happy he cared. Like the last celebrity to care was like Mr. T and take it seriously, right? And okay, great. Bad Bunny came in the ring and like actually took the bumps and and you can tell he did the rehearsal, the studying. Yeah. He got he took yeah. and I, and I respect that. So I respect him for that. What I but going down the list like why why would Matt Riddle lose to Sheamus? Okay, you're going to have Lashley win because you want to you don't want to put over McIntyre. You're going to have Big E lose so you can have Nigeria man win. And then you're going to have Roman Reigns just rub out the two biggest stars that you have that are veterans. So the two biggest veterans, like the only one left now, again, is Randy Orton because Goldberg fucking took out the Fiend a year ago. You ruined your best heel character with yeah, that Goldberg. Was a, that was terrible. Stupid. That was terrible. Yeah. And and yeah. then, OK, so now you have Reigns. So Roman Reigns is the only one that hasn't been taken down or challenged and because everybody else has lost. Now, what are you going to do? Bring Randy Orton back up. So you have 20, 20 year veteran Randy Orton. You have Roman Reigns, who are your, your last two names that haven't just been completely spat on because. Lashley feuded with Finn freaking Balor and lost the Intercontinental title. And then it was like that whole Shinsuke Nakamura Strowman thing, which yeah. Nakamura is another one who I just can't stand. But I mean, Strowman was the universal champion for a minute and they took it from him. They 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 should have put him over, but now he left. He, he had an injury or something. And that's when Roman Reigns got it back. But OK, fine. So Strowman's back. I want to see him get a push. I thought Matt Riddle was who's a little annoying with the bro thing, but at least he's fresh. Don't take it from him for fucking Sheamus. Are you kidding me with Sheamus? Right. Well, I think there was Sheamus? a thing that happened there where Riddle, the only reason why Riddle Sheamus. got it is because um, they had to take it off of, because it was supposed to be Keith Lee. So Keith Lee was supposed to be the guy that, ended, but he got an injury and they took him out of the match. So they had to give it a Riddle because they had to take the belt off of Lashley so he could win the, WWE title. Now they're just kind of going back, and now they're they they had him lose it to Sheamus. This is where I see Keith Lee coming back and being the next big star of WWE. He's going to end up coming back and taking it from Sheamus. So, so what do you do? What do you do with Kevin Owens then? 
Kevin Owens is 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 entertaining and he's a good wrestler, but he's been around now for a little while and they just I don't know, I feel like they're a little lost with him. They don't know what to do with exactly. him. Exactly. But he's really good. He's entertaining. I feel like they're big like so we just mentioned all these titles changing hands and it's for a bunch of schlubs. You have good stars at the top that aren't getting the push over. Like Randy Orton's not in a title contention. Kevin or- Kevin Owens not in title contention. You just rubbed out Edge and Daniel Bryan. So who do you really have left at the top? You know, okay, so you got no big stars. You're gonna, you're not going to put over the fiend again because he just got taken out last year. So those are your three big heavyweights. Yeah, but but and everybody, then, all the big stars lose. The Rock has lost many times. But it's not Stone about, Cold has not, lost many times. But that's the I difference. think you're. I think it's you're not about angry. losing. It's about no. the angle. No, no, no. Listen, because no, when the I, Rock I think lost, it, I think it's when because... the Rock lost, it was at a culminating moment where he had to go all year long in either tag matches or secondary matches where he was winning, 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 winning. Gets to that match against Stone Cold because they're like picking each other off or whatever, and then he would lose, and then there would be a rebuttal because their feud would still be continuing, and then at SummerSlam the other one would win, and you'd have like these culminating matches throughout the year. But what's happening now is there's a feud. During the three weeks, they go to the pay-per-view, it settles at the pay-per-view, and then they're on to the next. There's no lasting storylines that run a year or two years. T- name me one storyline that's run longer than three months that's active right now. One no, storyline. I, I, I agree. I think that's a WWE problem. I think that's a – But that's, that's a why this many, WrestleMania sucks. That's a too many wrestlers issue that – yeah, but it's it's they they're gonna do what they they're gonna do. I'm talking about just in terms of the matches, I just ma- who's winning, who's losing. Who, the wrestling. I, I thought who won and who lost sucked. I thought they uh, buried all of the. All I, I of the disagree. Other than the Lashley one, uh, other than the Lashley McIntyre. Sheamus. One. Yeah, I mean, but Riddle and Sheamus, they're they're mid card guys. They're not. Sheamus you know, they're came not gonna... back like Edge came back, but Sheamus came back. For like my problem with Sheamus is he was popular in a time that had shitty talent. It was a transition period. He had no business, no business coming back and demanding title matches. Like his character is garbage. He's a flaming redheaded schmuck. Like get out of the ring. I'm done with you. I'm just done with you. I I just I I don't want to see him anymore. I just don't want to see him. He's been around a little while. Yeah. Well, I yeah. They need they needed the next superstar to step up. They need like the next. You know, uh, what they say with uh, with John Cena when he first got introduced, the ruthless aggression. They need a new ruthless aggression era with somebody stepping up. Yeah. And I who that is, who knows? Have. Yeah. But, they, yeah. I, I think all of I the rising say... talent, all of the rising talent was buried at WrestleMania. That was my big problem with it is that mm-hmm. they buried they buried the young guys for a bunch of old guys or or less talented guys. But I think I think you look at the wrestlers now because they don't they're not big names anymore, right? The Cena's of the world, The Rock, Stone Cold, like those guys are gone, right? And they're not they're not going to come back. And by the way, The Rock is not going to come back and have this big match with Roman Reigns. He'll I didn't come say back. big match. I said interfered with. All they needed not- to do was play The Rock's music. He's in freaking Florida. I, and again, I'm only using that as an example. I don't care. He's who too it big was. of a star now, with too much money at stake, making movies the way he is to, now to come to back what? to and have his risk. music play, turn up, and then no, 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 whack no. I'm saying, the chair. Yeah, but like for what? Just for him to appear? Like that just doesn't that doesn't happen at WrestleManias. It doesn't. It doesn't. It just doesn't. So happen you're at telling me that that so you're telling me that Sting versus Triple H a few years ago at WrestleMania when D Generation X came out. And NWO came out with their gray beards and walkers to make a, a, a pop doesn't happen. They don't they don't do that. No, is what no, that saying. happens. But you're not you're not in bringing those guys back to put them into an angle. It's not like they came back. I didn't the next say put week. them in an angle. I said affect the match so that there's so that Roman Reigns could could leave with a reason to feel threatened. The Rock doesn't feel threatened with again. what? And then and then he's going to say, okay, The Rock who's came the in next, and interfered with the match. Who's the next person now? You're going to bring Braun Strowman back up to fight Reigns? Like, he's, he, everybody's been beaten. He just beat Kevin Owens at a throwaway pay, a pay-per-view event two months ago. There's nobody left for him to have a quality feud with except this whole head of the table thing. So now you have The Rock 
knock him down, and then everybody else starts this insurrection against him as head of the table, and he has to fight for his place. And now everybody's coming. It shows a little bit of weakness because as of right now, there's nobody left to challenge him. And just The Rock establishing well, I, I, himself threatened that whole thing. It's just one tiny angle. It doesn't mean that's what I needed to happen. WrestleMania had no pop. For having all those fans there, they didn't give him the moment where the whole place blew the roof off, other than just being together in a crowd and yelling when Hogan came out at the beginning as a novelty. Like there wasn't that in the match moment that the whole place were like, this is a moment that made this WrestleMania. They just didn't have that. They did not have they didn't give one person that was getting cheered. <laughs> what is that? I just waited for Asia to just. His, I'm just waiting for his uh, head sorry, to explode. Sorry, I, I, I was just waking up. I just noticed that you guys are still going. I apologize. Oh, it's, you're playing like um, you got to be playing a game like Candy Crush or something on that thing. I think he's like it's like a snoring app or something. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's what it is. Okay, right. those sleep aids. All right. Well. This was, this was All right, now that riveting. We're, now that we're halfway through the WWE <laughs> discussion, the second half of the WWE discussion. <laughs> Back to the 80s. Uh, no, I think I think we've covered a lot. I think we've covered a lot. And uh, I think Here, it's time, I think here's it's time where we rein it in a little because you guys are cold all night. You guys, you guys going to talk about the Winter Falcon and the, and the cold soldiers now? At here's, least where it's Jarvis, a, here's where Jarvis goes silent. <laughs> At least and by the make- way, no, I know I it's make believe. No, stop it's it for a second. No, and you are sitting there thinking plot lines. I don't come up with plot lines for the shows I watch. Yes, you I do. Just- with that, yeah, yes, you do. You sit here and hypothesize about what Wanda Sykes is going to do with Vision Quest next week, and you're trying to guess why some random Asian character named Jimmy Wuhan showed up in Pennsylvania. <laughs> I listened to that whole thing, and I don't know what the fuck you were talking about. Okay, it didn't make any Jarvis, sense. You guessed Jarvis every week. Jarvis needs to rein it in. He needs to rein it in. Out the- yeah, but you. I, all it, I know, all I know is this. Okay, you said I don't listen. I don't enjoy Marvel. I actually enjoy those movies. I just haven't had time to stay as caught up as you guys. And you go in such detail on Jimmy Neutron or whatever the hell Willy Wonka <laughs> superhero you're watching next. And all right, because I missed I missed the Avengers movies. Right, I had no reason to watch them. I was too busy, and but, I didn't have time to sit down. He, you have he the could, kids. He could go you're, in, you're in like the critical. Age. But he could go in critical detail over <laughs> WrestleMania and every single match, and why there wasn't a, like a pop. <laughs> it's like the detail behind his WrestleMania is on another it, level. It, this is like trench but warfare. We can't have 2.0. detail in our shows. Yeah. I didn't say you can't. I said don't make fun of me like I'm the only one. That's all. Just make it equitable. <laughs> and I need to go get my charger for the computer. So you're gonna leave there for a little go. bit? Okay. No, you're gonna go talk about falcon soldier or whatever some stupid crowd is happy thank you (laughs) uh all right now we lost jarvis for for a minute here he's 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 upset that we interrupted his his uh wrestling um i don't know what to call it he's his love his love of wrestling yeah i think i think it's it's more of his nostalgia it's just he just can't just sit back and just watch it for what it is and you know i'll tell you one thing my my final point on wrestling is Watch the wrestling these days and what they, these guys are doing in the ring compared to what guys were doing even 10 years ago. The wrestling doesn't even compare. These guys are doing career-threatening moves in the ring that I'm, like, surprised that you don't see more injuries these days. Way more. I mean, back to, if you go back 20, 30 years ago, all it was was a couple of punches, a couple of punches, you know, a couple of body slams. I mean, it's all just kind of slow wrestling moves. The stuff that they do now is remarkable. So. Yeah, well, back in the day, Jimmy Snuka jumping off the top rope was like a big thrill. That was the now, big thing, yeah. yeah now people now are doing backflips. Yeah. Now doing, people are doing backflips off the top rope. It, it's just, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, off the top of the cages. Like, it, it's evolved. It definitely has evolved. All right, Big Meat. Well, we got this small window before... Jarvis comes and starts bashing Marvel. Very true. Uh, so just a quick, because there's not a lot to talk about. The Winter Soldier, the Falcon and Winter Soldier, the pace is picking up. It was good to see the story moving along. Again, it, it's not very memorable. Like I walk away after it and I try to try to think about the episode. It, it It's not their best work. I, I just think the, 
I like the characters. I just don't think they know what to do with them. They're not making them stand out. And I actually did. I kind of thought about what you were saying. And I went back and watched the Winter Soldier the other day. Captain America Winter Soldier. And you, and you are right about like their powers was so much more amplified in that movie. And now like when you think of like like to your point, like you were saying, like Captain America had all this power and this new guy plays Captain America and all of a sudden he has all of his moves and all of these things, but he doesn't have the superpowers. Right. But we well, learned that he somehow lucky. is yeah. But even Bucky like seemed like he was like this unstoppable force in Winter Soldier and now he's like eh kind of well, <clears throat> well now with this last episode right he he took the serum right and and now he does have a little bit of that, that the captain america super does. soldier yeah, yeah 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 and so now at least it's kind of intriguing on how these last two episodes are going to end with that but um i do think bucky they they kind of make him a little bit they, they make him a little weak and in fact after winter soldier or even maybe after civil since civil war he's been kind of like a a nobody character. He's just kind of in the background. Like, I don't know if they know what the hell, they, what, what they're going to do with them. Now they have the show coming out. You thought maybe it was going to revitalize his character. And I don't think it's really done anything no. crazy. I, I think I, I agree with what you said. It's not memorable. You don't look back at the episode and say, yeah, that was a, that was a great scene. Maybe that final scene was pretty good. Cause it, it was, it's like, now you, you have like an actual villain now in the, in the, uh, in the, for these last two episodes, but. I do think it's still lacking. It's not a memorable show. It isn't their best work. I agree. And it's just, hopefully these last two, two episodes, they go out with a bang and they have, you know, I, I did hear they have some, uh, some big um, surprise uh, guests or appearances or, or some character that comes out in this next episode. That's pretty big. So yeah, hopefully they, they don't it. disappoint. Hopefully yeah, they don't sounds like what they should have done at big. WrestleMania. <laughs> the rock. Is gonna come and make a special <laughs> yeah, appearance. Yeah, oh, imagine that. Yeah, the That's, Rock comes into the. I mean, be a Marvel Whatever, whatever it is that that happens, I'm watching. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what though, Jarvis? I, I'd rather watch this last WrestleMania again than than another episode of Young Rock. I'm about I'm about this I'm close about to done. giving up on the Young Rock. <laughs> it's getting bad. Although it's every other week, it's pretty tolerable like it's when he's a little older at like miami and whatnot that i'm like all right i can walk but the whole broken phone episode two weeks ago yeah i was like what, what did i just yeah. watch right right why, right why, why do i like you bet why am i supposed to like you better after watching this episode so, so, sorry Azar. We, we we're going back to wrestling well, <laughs> going you know, back you to know wrestling topic i saw um i i don't know if this was um rocks was the scorpion king the, Rock, the Mummy yes. Two was that his first acting role? Yeah, uh, the Mummy mm. the Mummy Two was his first acting. role. That was yeah. right, but like his yeah his first big time thing. He might have done. He, if you watch that, he was so bad, and he's evolved over the years. He's got it wasn't better. him. He was he was CGI'd in that. No, no the but beginning the second, of the movie. In the beginning, the beginning of the movie, movie, it was him. Yeah, in Mummy if Two. You, if you watch, what was the was it the Scorpion? Ki- what? I think it was the Scorpion the King Scorpion the movie King. that he was actually the Acadian and like how he like that was actually pretty good. Yeah, I'm just saying when you look at his first not acting the, thing. Yeah, but not the Brendan Fraser one. That one. He, was, yeah, he was, he was so bad. And again, it's perfect for him. He shouldn't be talking. Don't talk, Brock. Just flex. I don't know. The Rock's really funny. Now he is. Now he is. Back then he, he was. Did, he, he, well, so but see, this is right. Back then he did the rundown. And the rundown is still probably one of the one of his best movies, most underrated movies, with Stifler. Yeah, hysteric- it was hysterical. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. It's right. It's right up there with the Pest days are. And, oh, and it, you haven't top, seen top the Pest. It's, it's one of those timeless classics. I'm sorry, yes. I missed it. All right, uh, so I'm giving you diamonds in the rough, and you just can't see beyond it. You are in the rough, just like in golf. You are lost in the oh, rough. Oh, listen sideways, tee shot. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Why don't you the, go have the another one cute inch, little the one inch drive? <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a cute little cute little shot. It cute was, little yeah. shot. It's no, cute. It, 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 fell t- it fell off the tee. Uh, <laughs> All right. I don't have anything else for the Falcon and Winter Soldier. I'm sorry if anybody was wanting some feedback. Not much to talk about. It's just like we said it in the beginning. It's not very memorable. Hopefully, this next episode, the pace picks up. I actually like those characters better in um, uh, Captain America Winter Soldier. I actually yeah. enjoy those characters 
better I, in I, that I, movie. I, yeah. And I yeah. and I think you might be right. Maybe those characters aren't built to have their own show. Like you were saying, they're yeah. more like they're, they're good side characters. Yeah, exactly. they're good secondary. It you sounds know. like you're talking about WrestleMania again. A little bit, a little bit. I guess, I guess, I guess you're right. I guess it comes full right. circle. Yeah, it comes yeah. back. I, I mean, I, I, I couldn't tell. I do, Jumping back in, I couldn't tell. what I thought we were still on WrestleMania with nothing but a bunch of side characters taking over the show. <laughs> you know, that they were true. missing that big character. That, I mean, I don't know. I don't know, but it sounds like you it's just ripped off my WrestleMania thing. This podcast, is we're trying to stay with a consistent theme here. Well, speaking of but, themes of characters and people that don't belong in certain positions, Let's talk about Aaron Rodgers. Ah, now, my now this is a, yeah, so I want to first start because I want to talk about the rumors. And I don't even understand the rumors because I've been hearing them on the radio. I just don't get where they started regarding Aaron Rodgers and the Patriots. But before I, before I say that, everybody I hear is consistently saying Aaron Rodgers on Jeopardy was terrible. Mm-hmm. Yet Jarvis is going to come here, people, and he's going to make the case to defend Aaron Rodgers. Now, he's not going to go into super detail. We just want the summarized version of what you're thinking, Jarvis. But what makes you think Aaron Rodgers is doing a good job on this show? Other than your man crush. Let's just put that aside. Like, Put it aside, your man crush. What makes him fit well, this role? Uh, so I don't know if he does fit the role. Okay. That's not a good so, start. That's not a good start, Jarvis. I, well... Here's why he, he, does, he doesn't I, fit the role in the playoffs either. He, <laughs> listen, neither do you. The only the only role you fit is from the freaking bakery over there. Go get another one. <laughs> cinnamon bun. In the, nice. in the Hag- in the Hagrid ride. And, uh, on, on Here, here's what I like about it. Here's what I like is that I've watched I've watched every every single episode that he's done so far. And he's he's only got two more left. He's got tomorrow. And actually, yeah, he's got tomorrow and Friday. He's only doing it for two weeks. He is he's coming out of his comfort zone of live TV, right? He, he's those State Farm commercials, I think, are pretty funny. And he does have personality in them. You bastards, let alone. Mm. The, you know what? He, he's got Kermit a writer. He's got a Mahomes. writer for that. He's better than Kermit the Frog Mahomes oh, with an L. Here's what I think. Aaron Rodgers put so much time and effort into studying Trebek that he's trying too hard to be Trebek and he's not bringing his own. You're all going to die. So let me, let me get out ahead of your rebuttal to this, his own, what you would call lack of personality because nobody seems to think he has one. I think he, I don't think he's Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning's the funniest athlete probably of our generation, but I think he's got a layer to him that if he just opened up a little bit, I, I think that he would do a great job because he knows when to laugh at himself on the show. Like there was a, a there was a Jeopardy question that was what was uh, what was what team won six championships Five in the fifties and the sixties and yeah. and this guy who was who this guy who was answering questions that hey had no business no human should know paused and nobody got the freaking question and Aaron Rodgers had to say the Green Bay Packers and then they asked the question what basketball team won a bunch of championships in the same decade and the guy boom Boston Celtics he goes really. You knew that, but you didn't know the Green Bay Packers like he knows when to make jokes. But I think I think he studied Alex Trebek so much that he's trying to use his lines. But the voices are so different that he just kind of sounds a little foolish. Where he's like, yes. Uh huh. Again, uh, that's right. Siegfried Bach. You know? And he's like, he's not Alex Trebek. So he's trying to use Alex Trebek's phrasings. And he came out and said that, that he's never studied so hard in his life for it, like he studied harder than this than he did to study the Buccaneers defense, clearly. But I I think that I think that long term he could settle into this because he does have the right mentality to bring the show credibility. People are watching. I think that he's funnier than what he's letting himself be. And if this wasn't a two week guest host thing, I think he would open it up a little bit more. He just needs to be a little looser. So I would like to see him pursue the hosting job of Jeopardy mm. and really just kind of relax and get it out there because I think I think he could be much better than what he is but I think he would also not make the show a mockery and change it because you know they need to make some jamoke that is just happens to be popular and, and at the moment try to fit and ruin the show I think he can keep the show true to what it's been 
He just needs to be himself, not Trebek. So, so just to be clear, you're okay. Sucked. You're okay with Aaron Rodgers continuing to be the host for Jeopardy, but you don't want Bobby Lashley to continue being the champion in WWE. Yes, they're both terrible. <laughs> they're both terrible. <laughs> so it's, to it's go back potential. to the whole consistent theme. So listen, it's about potential. Aaron Rodgers was the, the guest host for for Jeopardy for two weeks. That's about a that's about a week and and six days too many because. Ah, but what are the ratings? Look at the ratings he delivered every night. He had people turning in. So yeah, everybody get, from Green Bay, Wisconsin, tuning in to watch Jeopardy. People. Who the hell his, watches Jeopardy anyway? Who watches it ever since Trebek died? Nobody watches Jeopardy. Well, now that Aaron Rodgers is there, I do. There's 17 people in Green Bay, Wisconsin, so that can't be who's watching it. The country They're is watching, watching a train wreck. They want to watch the train so wreck. What? They watch a train wreck, exactly. <laughs> so Travis, you just have to admit it. He has no. no personality. He's a fraud. He's a choke artist. He can't. He can't win in the play. He can't beat Brady. Damn it. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, you know what, Pete? That's an interesting. And you know what? Segment. If Aaron Rodgers ever showed up as the as the guest wrestler for WrestleMania, I'd he would suck in. at. He would suck at that too. <laughs> he is no bad bunny. No, he is no bad bunny. I don't know what a bad bunny is, but I don't want anybody to be a bad bunny. All right. So, me, hold that wife. thought. Hold that thought. She's not listening. She's one of your only listeners, by the way. She sets an alert for this. <laughs> and she this? listens to it. So when she hears me say I want her to be a bad bunny, that was a sexual uh, reference <laughs> and for a costume. So don't take it any other way. <laughs> no comment. Yeah, I'm not I'm gonna, gonna I, get, I don't even know where to go with that one. But I want to go back that to wasn't Pete's for comments. You, that was for her. Listen. We don't we don't have flirt a flirt with your wife. Flirt with your wife on your own time, not on the podcast. I don't, don't really hey, care. You should do not she do not discredit one of your only committed female listeners. I we I'd rather have her you her on the podcast than you. We've actually sent her an invitation. It's in the mail. We're gonna ask her to punch you out. I think she'd be more riveting and have better takes than <laughs> what better takes do you want? I'm the only one that keeps you from slithering into snake take hell, wherever the hell you take you. Oh, and this one, come on. Snake take it. What a cheesy thing to come up with. Anyways, me speaking of, I want to go back to Rogers. Now you, your harsh words, they, very they, harsh. they're very hurtful to Jarvis. They yes, are. I, now, I did it now, on purpose. It's me. What happens if, if there was the, the rumors did come true that Rogers did come and play for the Patriots with, with all that he pushed aside. It have to be. It, it, you know what? That's an excellent question, Azar. But and you don't have an answer. All, all these. No, this is my answer. All these rumors about Aaron. I don't even know how it all started. I don't. I don't either. It, it, I, it ain't I, happening. It is basically what I'm saying. It's not going to happen. Rodgers isn't coming to the Patriots. Bill Belichick is not going to bring Aaron Rodgers to the Patriots. That would be going against everything he's trying to accomplish and try to win a Super Bowl without a Tom Brady type, caliber type player. He's not going to bring Aaron Rodgers to New England to win a Super Bowl. He's not going to do that. He's he loves Cam Newton first of all, first and foremost. Cam Newton's going to be your quarterback, <sighs> and if not, he's going to end up drafting a young guy and he's going to try to start the whole process over again and win that way. Aaron Rodgers ain't coming to uh, to to New England. The Rock isn't coming back to, to have this big matchup with Roman Reigns. Aaron <laughs> Rodgers is not going to be the host of Jeopardy. Okay? Period. That's it. Get over it. It's done. God damn it. Now I'm, now I'm angry. Now, now right, I need to calm down. I before you have a down. heart attack, because we can't <laughs> rescue you. Now, <laughs> you're being hurtful to Jarvis in more than ways than one. He's happy today. I think just the rumor of Rodgers coming. Just Rogers doing Jeopardy. He's been in a much better mood. He's bringing more energy. And here you are bringing up Cam Newton again. Are you trying to bring Jarvis <laughs> down again? That are you trying true. to? Yeah. Is that your plan? Listen, you listen vicious I, I, bastard. If Aaron Rodgers, by some slim chance, glimmer of hope that he ends up coming to the Patriots, you'll be buying his jersey. I'm I, well. I'm, I might not be buying his jersey, <laughs> but I'll, I'll still. I'll be rooting for the. I'll be rooting for him. I, I'd be happy because he's a great quarterback. Thank but, you. You know, I want. Come, it, but Mark, come what playoff, time are we at? But come playoff time. <laughs> I'm shutting the TV off. I ain't watching those crappy games to see him choke and lose again. In the oh, playoffs. but you're gonna watch Cam Newton Week One blow a wild card game and be like, "Yeah, successful season. We made the wild card. Oh, Spent half a billion I am dollars. not a. I am not a Cam Newton supporter. I'm a Mac Jones supporter. If Mac Jones comes to the Patriots. 
Mac Jones is the reason Downs. we're getting Garoppolo. Yeah, Mac that ain't happening either. Maybe next yeah. year, but that ain't happening this year. Listen, all I can say is in January, Mike Florio from Pro Football Talk broke down the scenarios as to how it was possible that Aaron Rodgers would not be in Green Bay. And the bombshell in that article that he wrote was that he could end up in New England because of some cap shenanigans and Bill Belichick stroking someone in Green Bay. I don't know how. No way. No, you just asked where chance. it came from. I'm pretty sure you asked the question not and I gave you an I, answer. I, how can I you did rebut no way? I did, but how, I did but how are they going to do that? They just signed a bunch of guys in free agency. They're they're strapped in cap. Well, clearly you didn't listen to years. Antifa say that they masterfully signed these guys so that they're all on minimum cap and, hits. Antifa's and always he, always touting a Division three college player that's going to be drafted in the first round for the no, Patriots, oh, and he's going to no, no, be no. in the He superstar. never touts them. He doesn't tout them before they're drafted. Oh, he does it afterwards. He's okay, the yeah, only yeah, after yeah, they're drafted. Yeah. Get that very, yeah. all right, very clear all right, gotta, because that's going to come I up. I misspoke. The draft that. is in th- two weeks or three weeks. I don't know. It's, the draft is soon. Two weeks, right? Uh, the 29th or two weeks. Yeah, and I'm actually very excited for that one. I know. Is it next week? Is the no, it's maybe two be- weeks. In two weeks, we're going to have a big pre-draft podcast. That's yeah. uh, a little. Oh, is it two weeks? You're right. You're right. Yeah, I thought it was two next weeks. week. But two weeks. No, the, so okay. the draft is on, I think, the 29th. The, 20, the draft is the Thursday. The 29th is the first round. The second and third are Friday. And then the rest are Saturday. Yeah. So we'll have to podcast the 28th on that Wednesday, right? Yes. Do our, yes. Do our mock draft? Yes. I'll we'll have to have the mock draft and we'll have to go through those. Um, so anyways, I'm going to put that side, Big Meat. So it looks like you have no faith that Rogers is coming. Jarvis has given us the backstory I'm, where the rumors started. It's as close to 0% chance as I could, I could say. I actually zero, heard a But the zero second percent. he shows up, you're going to give me a 0% chance he gets here. The second he shows up here, Patriots are instant favorites to win the Super Bowl. I agree. Track yeah, right Are you saying side. this year? Are you saying this year, this coming year? 20, it's impossible. 20, it's impossible. What? It's impossible. It's impossible. You, you got to trade away Gilmore's contract. Good. You got to trade away a whole bunch of guys. It's not going to happen. Name them. Name them. Name bringing, who we have to trade away. Not Name, bringing who, who do we have to trade away? Name them. Um, How many guys do we have to trade away? You don't well, even know. The guys because you don't understand the, the, the NFL either. I don't. I, listen you to me. You don't know. Judge. Listen to me, Rogers lover. You, you, listen, that, that no, rumor you listen. was released before <laughs> free agency. So you're right. They spent a shitload of money. But according to Antifa, all the money they spent doesn't affect oh, so the not, no, So he's your source. You're going to Antifa boy. How, no. Wow. He's not How my the source money has Rogers. fallen. You're going to Antifa he's, boy for your, for your salary cap knowledge. No, right. I'm so, showing you know, that you, nobody has a clue of the salary cap. And all right, all right, you. Hold on. Speaking of salary cap, just hold on. Hold on. Is, is it Antifa boy or is it McCockiner that you're going for your salary <laughs> cap? Salary <laughs> cap Dick. So with that said, <laughs> let's, let's, let's play this out again a little bit more. Edelman just retired. So that changes the dynamics of the – I think most of us expected he's not going to be himself anyways because he had a long history of injuries. But now Edelman is out. So he's no longer the slot receiver. Who's taking that slot receiver role? And does that mean the offense is going to be pushing the offense through the two tight ends? Is this, is this another clue with Edelman retirement? Did the Patriots do what they did because they had a kind of an idea Edelman wasn't coming back? No, because isn't Kendrick Bourne a slot receiver? I think they could find slot receivers. I think if Kendrick Oh, Bourne you, you mean a white guy. <laughs> well, they went from Troy Brown. I'm sorry, I misunderstood Brown, the question. And they went to Welker, and then they went to Edelman. They, they'll find another slot receiver. They'll find it's that, that's all part of the system, more so I'm, than the actual player. Itself. So, with that said, then if they're just replacing a slot, is it any chance that for the Rogers rumors that maybe they would sign and tr- or sign and trade the um, one of the tight ends to Green Bay to try to get Rogers? One of the guys that just signed? Yeah. You mean trade case. Hunter Henry to Green Bay or trade John U. Smith to Green Bay? To get to L- listen get... how ridiculous this sounds. It's it's not gonna happen. No. It's not gonna happen. They're, I, they're not gonna trade any of those guys. They're gonna yeah. end up trading their high priced guys that they're paying. Guys like Gilmore, who's the highest paid guy salary cap wise yeah. on the team. They have to well, trade him. Well, you look at to make it, this work. They have you're to gonna be a negative him. Nelly. I don't I don't want to talk to you about it because I'm look, I'm trying to find a reason to get Rogers here instead of Cam Newton. I would take back everything I ever said about Cam Newton. I would watch him on Jeopardy for the rest of his life. He can maybe, die on Jeopardy. Maybe they'll trade Nikhil Harry. 
Maybe they'll trade Nikhil Harry for Nikhil him. Nikhil Harry like, doesn't make happy. any money. Yeah, if I you know, trade man. Gilmore, but just make that's why he'll get cut. That's why he's going to get cut before the season starts. <laughs> Wait, look at it. They're yeah. already losing receivers. They can't afford to cut him now because they have uh, Al Galore and Bourne, who yeah, are yeah. terrible. Yeah, that's what they, that's going to solve their problem. We're going to keep. Nikhil I tell Harry. you what. They could trade those two suck receivers that they signed, Aguilar and Bourne. They could trade Stephon Gilmore and a first-round pick or two to Green Bay to get Aaron Rodgers. And if we have Aaron Rodgers for five years and we trade that loser, con- those terrible wide receivers that we signed, championship. I don't even care. Just draft wide receivers, just rounds two through six, right, Not and then draft it. a tackle or something. Maybe if Belichick tomorrow just all of a sudden surprises everywhere, everyone with a with another video like Julian Edelman where he sits in the chair and it's so overdramatic <laughs> and he announces his retirement as head coach of the New England Patriots and they bring in some other some other nobody coach, then maybe Aaron Rodgers comes to the Patriots. <laughs> but as long as Belichick is the coach of the – he's not coming. He ain't coming. It's not happening. Well, I'm not asking you. I, I'm only responding to the fact that it has been floated as a rumor. That's, yeah, that's I'm just bringing it and up. The me. rumors are all the rumors are nothing but smoke screens. But where there's smoke, there's fire. All right. And if there's fire around the rumor, I'm blowing it in your direction. So I'm going to ask this question because it came up on the radio today because we're on the topic of the Patriots. A little sidebar, but I have to ask it to you guys. I, I don't think Julian Edelman's a Super Bowl. I mean, a Hall of Famer. So I'm going to like, I know that was the hot topic. But here is an interesting topic. Who do you think was the better receiver, Welker or Edelman? So this is an ongoing debate. I, if you look at the numbers, statistic-wise, Welker blows away Edelman's numbers, <clears throat> right? It's amazing well, how much he blows them away by. Not blows just a them little, away. Yeah, crushes blows them. them away. And, and it's like similar, same number of years, roughly, right? It's not like Welker had this long 20-year career and Edelman only had like a – Well, Edelman was here for 10 years. Welker was here for, I think, six, they said. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, was it only six? I think it was more than that. I, I don't think was he was here that, that long. But but Edelman wasn't the same player the first few years he was in the league. <laughs> he wasn't like he was he was basically Wes Welker's like backup. Like Edelman didn't play. He was a punt returner for the first couple yeah, of years. I agree. So so you can't really count those years. It's when he became an official, you know, every okay, every that's game fair. starting receiver. But if you look at year by year, right? And Jarvis is holding up some stupid photo of like I don't know. Is that what? What is that? What are we looking that's at? Edelman's Edelman, catch Edelman. Oh, is that, oh, that's a nice. That's a nice autograph photo there. Do you uh, notice how he has that for himself, but that doesn't get auctioned? Yeah, in exactly. the golf tournament. Yeah, yeah. That's that's for himself. You're no yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, he keeps instead, the good stuff for himself. Yeah. Instead, we get <laughs> Nadia Comaneci and uh, and some some unknown <laughs> uh, cunt, old country singer like Willie Nelson looking like. So. If you look at the year by year statistics, like Welker had fifteen hundred yard seasons. He had he had years where he was like hundred and twenty plus receptions. Edelman never had that. Edelman Edelman always had, you know, barely cracked a thousand yards, maybe eleven 1, hundred yards. He had maybe a, you know, a hundred receptions, good years, but not on the same level as Welker. The big difference is oh God, do we have to bring do we have to bring up WWE again? Jarvis, he just can't let it go. The photo of, let it go. of Brett the Hitman Hart photo. Is that Brett the Hitman? Is that autographed by Brett? Yeah, is that it? Ah, oh, Jesus, he's keeping that one for himself too. The self. Yeah, that will that will not be auctioned. Um, but but if you look at the postseason numbers, that's where Edelman shines, right? Edelman's got the three Super Bowls. He's got the Super Bowl MVP. He's got the big numbers. He's second only to Jerry Rice in in uh, is it receiving yards or touchdowns? I think it's receiving yards. It's 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 remarkable what he's done in the playoffs. So if the criteria for making the Hall of Fame counts postseason as well, then maybe he is a Hall of Famer. But if you're not really counting those, if you're not putting a lot of weight behind that, then absolutely not. He's not a Hall of Famer. No, no the question is, Welker or Edelman? That oh, was the question. Yeah, I know right. he's not a like Hall a of Famer. Que- yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know he's not a Hall of Famer. I think it's too difficult for him. To- if Welker can't get into the Hall of Fame with his stats as a slot receiver – He's not getting in. Edelman's not getting in. Honestly, I, even though Welker's numbers are better, I'd still go with Edelman. I think now, Edelman's more clutch. He's clutch. He's more so clutch. So that one drop in the Super Bowl no, with Welker? No, no, it wasn't just the drop. It was, it was everything else. Keep in mind, too, when Welker was here putting up those big numbers, he had Randy Moss on the team, and he had the beginning of the, of the Gronkowski-Hernandez tandem. When Edelman came into his own and he started becoming like Welker left – 
Moss was gone. Hernandez was gone in jail. And it was Gronk. And they turned it to a little bit more of a running offense, right? It was, it was, the, it was just pass, 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 pass. And then all of a sudden it became a little bit more of a running offense with Edelman in there. So I, I don't like to compare the numbers because they didn't match up. Even though Welker's numbers blows away Edelman's, I can't. I just got to look at postseason wise what Edelman's been able to Edelman's been able to do, and just the eyeball test. I think they're both very similar type players, but I'm taking the clutch guy. I'm taking the guy that's performed in the playoffs. So that's right. The only rebuttal I have to that logic is that Welker was able to achieve what he did. Think about it. With all that talent on the team, he was still like but a he big was target. heavily. Heavily targeted, though he had he had 150, 160 yeah, targets so what, a year. So, but he still was able to achieve that despite having all. Think about how many great. That's receivers, the game plan. Uh, people, but that's the game plan. If you're targeting Welker in those game plans, you're targeting him. When you're not targeting well, uh, Edelman as much because you're throwing it more to the running backs. Who was the guy? Who were the guy? The running backs during Welker's era. Lawrence Maroney, <laughs> a bunch of like nobodies, right? So then all of a sudden you got James White, you got some running. Rex oh my God, you really going to say James White is the difference maker from? Come on. No, I'm James, saying I'm James saying Marine? that I'm saying the targets are going to him throwing to the to the running back, whereas you didn't have that back when Element uh, Welker was putting up all those. I am going to I am going to double down and say they yes. Kevin Falk, One hundred percent. Yeah, Kevin Falk. Kev- it was towards the end end of his career, though. And Sammy towards Morris. The end of his career. Yeah, but Kevin Falk, Falk was heavily targeted. He wasn't like he was just Listen, some nobody. The drop in the Super Bowl I'd say Bowl more Vereen than Falk at that the point. The drop in the Super Bowl matters more than anything else. So you're punishing him for that one play, basically. 100%. Absolutely. Okay. That's fair. That's your opinion. I I'm not, I'm not saying you're wrong. I would say it's a factor. I wouldn't say that's the only. That's the no, only. No, it's the biggest factor, and it's not the only one, right? So, like... I think Edelman, watching Edelman versus watching Welker, I feel like Welker got the benefit of Moss going deep and taking three Absolutely. of the best defenders with him, and Edelman streaking underneath, which was a game plan that like nobody nobody else was doing. So the Colts had Brandon Stokely that was kind of doing it, but Manning still, the Colts had these famous deep cross routes where they would always hit either Harrison or then Wayne coming loose, and it was never – a huge emphasis and they had really specific set routes and it wasn't until the Patriots got Welker and Moss that that really, really deep stretch the field combo with the underneath, like really shifty receiver came prominent. And and it, so Welker was a little ahead of the time in, in what he was trying to do. Now I'm not saying they haven't been great slot receivers, but the slot receiver position was redefined and reestablished with those 2007 plus Welker Patriots. But what Edelman did was he came in knowing that he he wasn't going to have the help, like you said. So you had Gronk in the seam. You had, well, Hernandez until he started killing people. And a slew of other receivers that are just plug and play. But Edelman never disappeared. Welker took a ball in 2011, threw his hands almost off his face mask and lost the Super Bowl. Julian Edelman took a ball out of the hands of a defender, popped it in the air, slapped it off a guy's thigh, caught it, and won a Super Bowl. Game, set, match. The drive, the determination, the grit. I want Edelman 10 out of 10 times instead of Welker. Having said that, Welker had a great career, and I think he was a fantastic player. And he was here for six years, Big Meat. It was six years. Yeah, and and, and you talked about Kevin Fox. Kevin Fox last year, his last two years, he was basically nothing. And then his last great year was 2008. You know what I mean? That was like two years into Welker's career. So Falk didn't really, you know, factor in all that much during, during that time. I really wanted to move on to Big Meat's topic of the current NFL free agents. Because just well, to wrap it up. For that. But for the, I want to just touch on this one fantasy thing. Because I, I, I was hyping Gio Bernard. Because <laughs> I thought there was rumors. And it wasn't me. It was just rumors. I was quoting an article that they thought. Wait. He'd be a good fit for the Patriots because of his pass catching ability out of the backfield. Like and Aaron Rodgers up? rumors to the Patriots. We're yeah, just, so there were just, just rumors. Not happening. But now, but Gio Bernard is with our buddy Brady. Do you would you reconsider Gio Bernard's value? Because we know how well Brady likes to kind of dish it out yeah. to a pass back, a pass receiving running back. No. no. 
Still no value. He's I say no value, zero. Because they still have Robert Jones, right? Is it Robert Jones? No, it's Can Ronald. Ronald Jones. <laughs> I knew yeah, but at least I, I know when I make a mistake. I know that doesn't sound right. So I, I get to correct myself. Okay. So Ronald Jones. <laughs> Ronald Keep Jones. Going. Who else? Um, but the fact is that they have a plethora of players that he's you gonna be throwing name, to. So how do you feel about Keyshawn Vaughn? Yeah, he's okay. I mean, but he's he was a rookie last year, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, and it's not Ari- like and Arians hates rookies. It, it's not. I'm I'm talking more about if you're talking of fantasy wise. I think this is what Azar is touching on. I'm not gonna go draft the Giovanni Bernard <laughs> when he's the he's the backup running back, right? I don't and think you he's got gonna be a backup. Brady's, and Tom Brady's throwing to Gronk and Godwin and Evans. And and Brait and who's the other guy? Is Howard still there? OJ Howard? There's too many weapons there. There's too many weapons. He's not gonna be. I'm not gonna go risking. You know, maybe what end of six sixteenth round pick just to be like ah whatever. I'll I'll throw my hat in the ring and, and hope for the best. Okay, so that I kind of a nobody you now. I think I think Azar's right that I'd Bernard... rather take Joe Mixon because he's the sole guy in Cincinnati now <laughs> and take Giovanni I take, Bernard. I take so so Azar's right in that Gio Bernard does have some there, there is a his name is attached to a it's at least in like the where do you draft if you need depth injury whatever but you're right in that it shouldn't be before the 15th or 16th round. But yes, I think he'll go now, before he's, that. He's now relevant for a stash on your bench. I think a- Azar I think, thinks he's going to be the starting running back. That's the way. No, he's, I think Azar loves Gio Bernard. Azar loves I think Bengals. He's right? going to be. Like, he's going to be minute. the third. Fournette be, is still there. Fournette, Fournette's going to be there, like, but he's going to be the third down back. They didn't bring him in to sit on the bench. They he is going to be their third down back. Mm. Okay, I don't think you got, they're going to keep. You got Jones. Gonna you gonna got Fournette, Fournette. You got Jones. Keyshawn Vaughn, and now you now you're saying. Giovanni, you know what? That's as hot of a take as Jarvis saying that LaShawn McCoy was going to be the dark horse of the year last year. Wait a minute. Is LaShawn McCoy still on the team? That's what I want to no, know. No, I, I think, think he so. still is. <laughs> that was a one year deal, I think. I mean, so, still wait, is. Wait. It's awesome. so why, why sign him? Why bring him in? Just an extra Brady. Body. And he said, go sign me somebody else. Yeah. I lost an Antonio guy. Brown. So you think they're going to go and the finish slot. camp and they're going to keep four running backs? On the active roster. Is well, that you what you're what? telling me? Let me check my season sure. ticket holder alerts. Patriots always have four running backs on the roster. A lot of teams have four running backs. Yeah, but the they play multiple roles. They, some of them will do special teams. You're thinking of Brandon Bolden. He's a, right? Is that who you're thinking sure. of? And, yeah. And, yeah. But he plays special teams. He's not there. Okay. They didn't bring Gio Bernard to do special teams. How do you know? They might have. What about Keyshawn Vaughn? Isn't he, uh, wasn't he stuff, a special teams guy? You know what? I, I follow Tampa Bay on Twitter. And I, it, you know, oh, and I'm telling, do you now? so all I'm saying is, do you now? so the yeah. hype, the hype, the Tampa Bay, Who's the pink hat now. So that, it, so that the hype they're putting around the signing and bringing him in and the stuff that I've read, I don't okay. think it's just, he's there to be transactions on the bench. Yeah. But you know what though? People were talking about the same thing last year when they brought in LaShawn McCoy and they're like, well, they brought in LaShawn McCoy for a reason. And what did he do last year? Yeah. But LaShawn McCoy was washed up. That's the problem. And Giovanni, Giovanni Bernard is a uh, is a Pro Bowl running back. I, I I am not gonna I am not gonna die fighting for Gio Bernard. Like he's not someone I really care. Oh, about. Azar knows him so well. He calls him Gio. <laughs> <laughs> we call him by his full name, Gio. He knows my, him my, so well. He calls him Gio. I can't stand his porn star mustache. I I actually <laughs> when I see photos of him, I actually get frustrated because he's got that stupid porn star mustache. Oh, it God. drives me nuts. But anyways. Oh. I think I think with Brady, I think he could be a potential weapon. That's all I'm saying. One, I don't think his value. Two, if three, he went on any four. Joe Blow team, if he came here with Cam Newton, I'm not telling you Gio Bernard's oh a good God. running back. I'm all just right, saying so with ready? Tom Brady. Azar, Azar, hold on. I got to help you out here. I'm going to go through the Tampa Bay running back. They have this guy named Ken Ken John Barner. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He. Actually, was I've heard his name. You don't know who that is. Shut up. I swear to God, I remember the name. And they put it. Yeah, John. Yeah, I remember him. That's the guy. He's so full of shit. No way. He was my dark horse for 2021. He was my dark horse somewhere, right? Yeah, he was. 
He was he wasn't yeah, he the guy? Yeah. Wait a minute. No, no, no. He no, no, listen. He was the guy, Jarvis. So you're probably reading the same thing. He was the guy that um that has won the last three Super Bowls. He was with the Eagles when they won it. Okay. And then he was with who was he with last year, two years ago? When when who won it two years ago? So the Eagles won it, and then Patriots. after the Eagles, we won it against the Rams. He was on the Patriots. He was on the he got a ring with the Patriots because he was on the Patriots. And, and then, then he was with the Buccaneers. Yeah. And he's the, the only Chiefs, player in history the Chiefs to win the, three Super Bowls three three years in a row. Yes. No, the Chiefs. Was he on the Chiefs? Oh, maybe he was with the Chiefs. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Okay, so we. But have I read this, this article. Wait, Don't quote me. On this. Stupid! He opened he a Snapple bottle. He read it on the top of a Snapple. I'm cap. telling you, he's this drinking. Is why he's drinking I'm just trying tea. to prove my point that I know oh, who this guy is. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, there's, more. Game, there's more. There's more. So we have. Ken, is, help me yeah, out. Really Ken John care. Barner. It's it's important to not <laughs> overlook Ken John Barner, because there's also a guy named C.J. Procise. Yes, yep. I know him. I remember Seattle, him from Seattle. Yep. Yep, there you go, Azad. Boom. See? Keyshawn Vaughn. We got know. seven running backs. <laughs> I, I'm not done. Um, Giovanni is like the seventh running back. There's the a, a man named Logan. Um, let's see. TJ Logan. I don't know his full name, but he was claimed uh, off waivers by Tampa from the Cardinals in 2019. So he's been on the team a couple years. That's important to know. We have the Keyshawn Vaughn. So I'm at one, two, three, four. Uh, Leonard Fournette is five. Um, I think I counted it. LaShawn McCoy and Ronald Jones. I think there are eight running backs on the depth chart as of right now. So, bar, yeah, maybe they can be special teamers, but you got Fournette, Jones, McCoy. McCoy's going to get cut. And then He's you got Logan, the Vaughn, Procise, Barner. And I may even be missing one more. All right. All right. Well, let's, so, just, so let's just move. There's a shot that Gio Bernard could just get cut. Well, that'd be interesting. Okay. I, yeah, I mean, I mean him, and, him and, you know, Nikhil Harry can go start a team. <laughs> a dream team right there. I, I'm not dying on the horse for Gio Bernard. I'm not, I'm not dying for him there. So let's just – we'll move on. All right, Big Meat. So you wanted to talk about some free agent signings of potential – wide receivers and running backs that are still out there because, and for fantasy reasons. And I pulled up a list. It says it's from March 26 from pro pro football network. Oh, and nice. I know the Connors you said was already signed, right? Yeah. There's no S. Somebody's going to yell at you for saying Connors. Oh, sorry. Connor, who's Connor, who's, he, who's, he, who's, it, Arizona Arizona Connor? Connors. Who's, yes. who's the Terminator who's, is in Arizona. <laughs> he's in, that's right. Arizona. So after that, it's Le'Veon Bell, Todd Gurley, Wayne Gallman. I think Gallman. Devontae Freeman is still out there, right? I don't see his name as the top 10, it, so he it, might be it, out there, but yeah, he might in not term, be. Yeah, you're, you're just talking about like offensive players that are, are fantasy football relevant. Yeah, I'm, I'm skipping Stop like – yeah, because Duke Johnson is a free agent, but no one cares. Right, I, I, like right. Todd Gurley, Le'Veon Bell – Wayne Gallman, because he was somewhat productive in New York when he had to take on the starting role. Uh, Adrian Ingram, Peterson, he's done. Melvin Ingram, he's he's nothing. He's yeah, still I don't there. see. He's Wait, not Melvin in the top Ingram 10. is not Mark Ingram. Melvin Ingram's a defensive end who's still pretty good. Uh, Mel, Tev- you're thinking of Mark Ingram. Tevin Coleman. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. I see Melvin Ingram. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. the he's the. Uh, yeah, he's I the got edge. a list of running backs. So <clears throat> Tevin Coleman is still out there. <clears throat> Jarek McKinnon is out there. None the of these names. Guy. None of these names. Was no, it? no. There, there's not a lot of good running backs left. All right. But so, if you if you look at receivers, it's a couple of still good ones out there. I like Golden Tate. I don't know why Golden Tate needs to get a look somewhere. I can't believe Antonio Brown is still out there. Wow. Do you think? Do you think someone like Cordell Patterson is going to make another run with the Patriots? Mm, He's out there. Yeah. Belichick liked him. He liked to, He was pretty versatile. It's a little for gadgety thing. You know who sure. else is out there? Josh Gordon. Why don't we just go back and bring the band back together? <laughs> Antonio Brown. Why not give him another shot? He's still a free agent. Yeah, just to spite Brady. What did Josh Gordon say? He said, "He said oh, I'm finally clean for the first time again in my career. It's like this is it. It's like how many chances is this guy gonna get? Right? Is he? Is he busted like five, six times already? Oh, his career. No, is I think it's eight times. Ugh. 
What a waste. What a waste of a talent. What a what a there's name. a lot of names that were dominant players like just even a few years ago that I can't believe are free agents. Like Ryan Kerrigan was a nasty edged oh, outside linebacker for Washington. He's a free agent. Um Tra- yeah, a lot said, of offensive tackles I've noticed on the list. Alshon good- Jeffrey has fallen far from grace. Trey Burton Injury never lived prone. never lived up to anything. DJ Fluker was a good tackle. Yeah, there's some good players. Is Gerald, just is, general. Is Gerald reset. Quan Alexander was he's a he was a great linebacker for New Orleans. Man. Yeah, Man, a lot of, some of a lot of good crazy. cornerbacks. KC Hayward, I remember. Was remember Justin Houston used to be nasty for KC. Yeah, so the free yeah. agent list that's left is not very appealing, Big Me. Did I'm you say sorry. Le'Veon Le'Veon Bell? Did you mention his name? Yeah, he's still yeah. there. He's yeah. terrible. And Todd Gurley's out there if you want. Richard Sherman's still out there. Maybe thought, maybe maybe COVID boy will will try with Le'Veon Bell one more time. Did the Chiefs to... end up signing their two tackles back? Because I don't think both. So. Eric Fisher and Mitchell Schwartz, which are Pro Bowl tackles, are on this list as free agents. So is in Pittsburgh. How old your list? Villanueva. I don't know. I just I have a list. This, I list. I have one from four days ago. Yeah. I was <clears> so say, so those two guys from, are still on the list. My, my list is from April 11th, Mr. March 27th. Not me. I wasn't. I didn't have the March 27th list. You weren't the I'm, one that asked me when my list was from. He's attacking me. I just want. I just want to make sure you're attacking Azar and I not me. I just answered your question. That's all. I thought that was a fair answer. You said, <laughs> "Well, how old's your list, asshole?" I like, just. Well, it wasn't okay. to be an ass. It was just asking yeah, how old's your list. No, you, you know, were, you, were, you know, you were condescending and pompous in the question. You know who's intriguing? That's out there, and I know he's old as hell. Aaron Rodgers, I Larry so. Fitzgerald. I think he resigned. Did he? I, he's on this list here from three, four days ago that I have. So he's I thirty-eight. Thought I heard they offered it. Maybe they offered him a contract, or they didn't. I don't know why Arizona wouldn't bring him back at this point. But he, Larry Fitzgerald for years was the guy that everybody was like, "Oh, the Patriots! Like he, they're gonna go out and get him. They're gonna, he's a Patriots guy. Yeah. He's a so Patriots wasn't guy. Anquan Bolden. They made a run for him, and he went to Baltimore. But they just like it, it, every year it was everybody was trying to get Larry Fitzgerald, like thinking that he was gonna. And then there was that meme that went around that Fitzgerald was at. Logan Airport. No, and that, that was picture. Trent Williams. No, that was, no, years ago. Years ago. This was like Larry Fitzgerald. There was a picture of him. They did the same thing with Trent Williams. No, I think it was the same. I think you're looking at the same photo that they oh, passed might have around. I'm just saying or, it was memed. It was the same. It, it, wasn't, it was, but, but it was a meme that they passed around because it was Larry Fitzgerald because they yeah. both look alike. So they passed it around year after year. They're like, oh, Larry Fitzgerald is back at Logan Airport. But it's the same photo that they, right. they, they they pass around year after year after year. So he might be kind of an intriguing, you know, he's never won a Super Bowl, kind of a low, you know, he's not going to ask for a lot of money. But I think he said. You just he lost was, Edelman. Why not? If it's Gerald has played slot for the last I, 10 years I, of his career. But I think he specifically said, I'm only signing with Arizona on one year deals until I retire. So mm. I'll just I, I, I thought he came out and said that. So that, that like something's telling me he didn't if he didn't re up, he said he wasn't going anywhere else. He's not looking to be a free agent. He's just signing one year deals with Arizona until he retires. Can I ask you guys something? Because as we start wrapping up the podcast, speaking of free agents, I noticed that Buffalo's Bills signed Mitch Trubisky as a backup for two and a half million. Why? Why wouldn't the Patriots? Take a shot at Trubisky and bring him in and have him because he's trying to make me mad now because he's worse than my puke. That's but why. two and a half, two and a half million <laughs> seems like such short money. He, I would he's, rather he's, have Trubisky. He's worse, two and he's half worse than Rodgers hosting Jeopardy. He's than, not worse than, than Cam playing, playing football. football though. I, I, I just, I just don't understand. I, I, I Rodgers is better at hosting Jeopardy than Cam Newton is at playing football. Like Jacoby, I, I would agree with that. By the, Jacoby Brissett was signed with the Dolphins. They paid him five million dollars contract Trubisky was half that and I think Trubisky is probably got more start well I don't know Jacoby Brissett did start for a, for a good amount um, I don't know I just don't understand why we're just stuck with Cam Newton like nothing else I it's would so Gardner perplexing Minshew. Gardner Minshew can throw a ball to a running back on a screen pass on a release in the flat and Cam Newton can't do anything except 
cock his T-shirt can and shoulder and fire a missile 10 feet away at whoever's in front of him. Defense doesn't matter. Throw your hands up. That guy gets more passes knocked down. I don't know what else to say. I'm just so flustered. And when I look at these but the Red Sox stuff- are a, a number one in the American League. We can't just ignore that there are other Boston sports happening. What do you yeah, mean? It's, it's the Red Sox. Okay, I think the Red Sox about, are a little bit of a about, fluke. How about a little Kendrick fluky. Perkins putting the business to Jason Tatum and all of a sudden Jason Tatum is now relevant again? Well, like I said, like when we do our like little notes before the podcast, I definitely want to do an NBA playoffs bracket and have meet. Well, we'll have a chance to pick who we think is going to be because now with all the injuries, it's actually still up in the air. Like there could be some dark horses that come up out of the uh, in the NBA, make a surprise push. I know it's not as exciting. NBA seems so predictable. Wherever LeBron yeah. is, just assume yeah. that's the finals. It's, yeah. it's going to be it's going to be Brooklyn and, and the Lakers like me. Oh, think, you guys just stole uh, my thunder. You just ruined it. All right, let's go back to the Red Sox. Another exciting team. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yay, Red Sox. Yay, Red Sox. You know, yeah. what? you know what? I don't hate the Red Sox. But I, I, hate, I hate the ownership. And exactly. I hate the ownership. I hate the ownership. I, the ownership. I just can't, like, yeah. I look at the team and I go, ugh. This is I think I think the whole race. and I think it's a kind of a fluky thing going on. I know they've won the last, what, nine in a row now that after today's doubleheader. Yeah. But it's not. I don't know. I just I see J.D. Martinez, right? He's he's tearing it, right? He's unbelievable this year. He leads the league in OPS. He's he's unbelievable. They've got a couple other good hitters, Devers, and and who's the other guy? Bogarts is hitting the ball well. Vasquez is hitting the ball well. But I don't know. I just don't see it. I don't see it keeping up. Ever since they got rid of Mookie Betts, it was just like, yep. what the hell? You got rid of him for nothing, and he wins with the Dodgers uh, World Series last year. He's one of the best top three overall best players in the entire league and you gave them up for who i don't even know who the hell they got so do you want me I, to tell you know. or are you just trying to make a point yes do you know who they do you know who they got <laughs> they, they get for him the so the biggest the, he so they they have alex verdugo who is like the biggest player he's starting yeah, yeah, now yeah just get, next, just gave you gave you a full 30 seconds to google the names but go ahead jeter downs is the other big prospect they got uh yeah. so those yep. were really the two pieces that they got back for Alex for doing. Then they got some like players that were thrown in the ball, like minor leagues, but the only two major leaguers were Jeter downs and, and Alex for but there were four players in the trade. The other two were minor leaguers that were swapped in. Yeah. And are so, they any good? I don't know. They haven't come up to the pros yet. How are they doing in the minors? Who follows minor league baseball? I don't know. I thought you knew all about this trade of all these. Players I just that they told got you names. I thought you, you knew everybody. Name. Big Meat is angry tonight. He's angry. Seriously. He finishes wrestling. He's all feisty. I'm not sure what's the matter with Big Meat. Jar- Jarvis is happy tonight. Big Meat's angry about it because he has been attacking. <laughs> and I, I'm not even sure what's going on. And, and we're arguing about the Red Sox. A dull team. Now, yeah, I, I am I so dull. And, and, in fairness, and in fairness, Jarvis, I actually am now intrigued. And I just haven't had a chance to sit down and watch it. I tried doing the radio thing. I, I just Because they've had some day games and stuff. I just can't do the radio. Just no. something it's grinding <laughs> to to listen so to baseball bad. on the radio. So, so Eckersley's not bad to listen to, but the problem, like, and, I, and I'll even tell you, the problem that I have with the Red Sox is that they traded away Mookie Betts. If if you're a Boston sports team, Boston has thrived off little man syndrome for decades. We've always been the less than the second tier Yankees, or or what you know. There's, and we've always had to have or prided ourselves as a fan base on having a player that we can push as like the best, like it's Jeter versus Nomar. Uh, our guy's better. Jeter's a freaking hall of famer. And Nomar's not, but every year they played, our guy was better. And we loved pushing that guy over the edge, right? We had Ortiz who was arguably the best hitter DH in baseball, but like, was he the best player? No, we had to like fluff his ass. We had Mookie Betts and they took him from us and gave us a bunch of stuff. That monkeys like Verdugo's got a good OPS. This guy's got a good spin rate thing on. Like, like oh, that's that's a ninety point no, 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 no. five Felger take. I've heard, the spin I've heard rate that. Is, I heard this stat thing. He, he attacking but, the stat geeks. But I've heard that. Ball. Why does this sound familiar to me? Oh, because here's what Felger <laughs> doesn't know is that they tried to sell the team to Billy Bean twice. They tried to sign him, which we all saw in Moneyball. But what you don't know is that Billy Bean put together a company called a SPAC, which was Red Ball Incorporated to take over. And they were 
eight million dollars or eight. They were they were a big amount of money off. And Billy Bean tried to buy the Red Sox because the John Henry and them want him to come in and data crunch the shit out of us. It's 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 true that their their stat man. That's why pitchers don't throw complete game shutouts anymore. And fantasy baseball is garbage because you it's can't the sabermetric just, statistics. You, yeah, it's the sabermetric statistics. And do you know what? Do you know what that takes away? That takes away the guy that's going to come up in the ninth with that intrinsic, just clutch gene, where they're going to smash a home run and win the game. The Red Sox, Boston sports, we root for the the guy to that we can put over. We root for the guy that's going to hit a late shot, that's going to hit a late home run, that's going to perf- Brady. All of these guys, all of our biggest heroes, were because they did something clutch not because they were like the best player in the league but we could put them up that oh you know tom brady has more super bowls than peyton manning well peyton manning had the best stats in football tom brady's entire career but brady won david ortiz wasn't the best hitter but he helped us win mookie betts helped us win you know so larry bird helped us win paul pierce we won like every single guy that we had in boston that we rallied around eventually helped us win and they weren't the best, but we made them seem like they were the best. And what this Red Sox ownership is doing is taking that away from us and taking everything that is Red Sox nation away from us. They would never sign Pedro because back then he was too, he, he, he was, he, he is, you couldn't quantify what he was going to bring to the table ultimately with his personality and galvanizing the team like they signed Pedro before they did all this baseball sabermetric stuff. You know who that got us freaking Keith Folk and Johnny Damon, like the two <laughs> guys that were snooze Kevin Millar. Are you kidding me? That like those were the guys that were brought in through sabermetrics when they were filled in with Manny Ramirez, David Ortiz, Jason Veritek, Pedro, all, Derek Lowe. All these guys were signed before that was the thing. And they use the sabermetrics to fill in the pieces, but they're forgetting that you can't do that for your, your superstars. Well, here, here's the difference back then is that they tried to use that money ball approach, but they had the money to also back it up and, and sign a whole bunch of those guys. Yeah, but they Whereas still I think have now, I know, but now they're not willing to, I feel like they're not willing to spend it. I feel like yeah, they're, payroll just, is they're the holding second. back. They have the highest or second highest payroll in baseball. How are you telling me they're not spending the money? They spent it on Chris freaking noodle arm sale. Well, who's the guy? Avaldi. They're giving him 40. Like these. Yeah, but just, it's a lot of dead money, isn't it? Isn't, isn't there a lot of money? Is it it's dead? not that they're not but, uh, spending it, John. They're not going out and getting the talent. But it's, who was the guy that they fired? Who was the GM that they fired Dombrowski. a year ago? Dombrowski, right. He was the guy that just unloaded the entire farm system. Unloaded the killed, whole thing. Killed the entire farm system. Signed but a bunch of that. guys. They were so de- terrible. See, this is why I hate the ownership, because they were so desperate so desperate to find a way to win that they knew Dom- Dombrowski ruined the Marlins. He ruined the Tigers because this is what he does. He comes in, he says, you guys have a shitload of assets. I'll go out and get you a, a, a team that can win today. And he leaves the, sh- the franchise in shambles. He did, he did it in, my, in Detroit. He brought in David Price. He brought in Miguel Cabrera. He brought in Victor Martinez. He had all these guys. He inherited Justin Verlander. He inherited Max Scherzer. He inherited Rick Porcello. He didn't draft any of them. But he then sucks. he turned around. I mean, and... Yeah, he's gone. I mean, that's why he sucked. He, he, the ownership, I think to your point. But just, they were so desperate. This... Ownership was so desperate for, like, I need to be loved. What's going to love? Well, let's 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 win another World Series. And they got it. They went out and did it. And then they said, oh, shit, you guys don't love us anymore? Because the year later, we sucked. So it was like, okay, well, let's fire Dombrowski. And what won it? Back when Theo was the GM, oh Saber, Matt. Okay, Hyam Bloom, come in and bring your computer algorithms and tell me what baseball plays we need to fix this. But they've thrown around money, like stupid money, to make like to make fans have like Kyle Crawford signing. They threw all that money and they threw, they tried to bring in names and it was a disaster here. They didn't fit. Like they've won two World Series since Kyle Crawford. Kyle, by the way, the, the, like, by the, way the reason. The reason why they're so high in salary cap is because they're still paying Chris Sale twenty million dollars. They're still paying. They're still paying David Price sixteen million dollars. They're still right. paying Dustin Pedroia twelve million dollars. And believe it or not, they're still paying Manny Ramirez two million dollars. It's 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 insane. Like how I would much take dead Manny money they wasted a lot of money. 
They wasted, they wasted a lot of a money. Ton of money. Yeah. But it, it's bad signings. It's bad. It's bad all around. You you, you didn't have that with Theo and I'll, like Duquette sucked as a GM for different reasons. But he got rid of Clemens, which I was I still think he shouldn't have got rid of Clemens, whatever. Theo didn't give out the contracts that lingered as bad contracts. It was you wanted him to to you we wanted didn't him Theo to Theo sign Manny. Up. Wasn't Manny? A- uh, ugh, no, Manny I think that was Duquette. In. That was Duquette. That yeah, long con- th- no, didn't he resign again with the Red Sox? That that was just that, one contract. No, that it was no, that was ten yeah, year. He, that was a ten yeah, year he deal. Gave Manny a big ten year contract. deal. Okay, wow. Yeah. That right. was like no, um, that no, no, that might have been Theo because Duquette was fired in two thousand two thousand one, and. Because Pedro came in in ninety eight or ninety nine, who brought in um the the Duquette fat slob brought in from Pedro? No, no, who brought in the fat slob? Uh, the panda. Oh, that was uh, that, that was, was Sherrington. Sherrington. Yeah, that okay. was Sherrington. So, I mean, there's another shit to the signing. I mean, I'm just like, oh, he came after Theo, right? He Sharon was after came, Theo. Yeah, no. the one that he sounded like Theo, like you know, yeah, on yeah, the radio. Yeah. He was Theo's second hand man. But the problem yeah. with that is he signed. So he tried to sign David Ortiz 2.0 because in San Francisco, Sandoval had hit some game winning home runs or had some big hits in the World Series, and they won two World Series with him out there. So they yeah, signed. But they didn't him. want they, him. They didn't want him in San Francisco. Nobody anymore. wanted him. Yeah, he didn't listen. They don't look like that's what I'm saying. They just are trying to spend money to f- make players fill optics. They're not going. Let's stop for a second. Take a look at like what truly wins. Like who who are the guys that are performing that or or, or that that are showing the right intangibles and let's build the pieces around them. They're just like, oh, this guy hit some late winning home runs. We have David Ortiz. We might be getting rid of him. Let's replace him with David Ortiz 2.0 because he's fat. Like that's what they did with him. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna so wrap did, it up here. So that's, hate the that's, a tangent, that's a tangent. That's a tangent. But we gotta wrap I should it up. Say, boys, Dan, Dan Duquette did sign Manny Ramirez. He, he did in two thousand. That was the signing. Um, all right, boys. Any closing thoughts before we wrap it up? Because we, 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 the Red Sox could be a whole new tangent. I'm happy to go on it once the draft is over because we'll probably need some things to talk about. I'm willing to dive in because the Red Sox boil my blood because I used to love following them, but I hate the ownership so much. That's my final thought. I, it's, it's the ownership. I want them gone. They've yeah. done their job. They got us the World Series. I'm grateful for it. But this ownership is obnoxious to the point where – I think when Lakino left, something happened with that organization. They became even more hateable. Actually, under Larry Lakino, I thought they were they were okay, but for some reason, when when Henry became more of the face of the organization, and, uh, and um, the what's his name? Who's the other guy under Sam uh, under, Kennedy? Sam Warner, Kennedy. Warner. They those yeah those guys. Something about them. Like Henry's Larry Lakino is it? Yeah, Henry's, he, he's the principal owner, and he's the worst. But he's not as vocal. I know Sam Kennedy's out there, but you can be. tell he, he for a little bit. Then he got mocked so much, so he pulled back. Well, but when Sam well, Kennedy talks, you feel like you're just getting – like you need a shower after he yeah, talks yeah. to you. Yeah, like, like he's just car salesman. Yeah, he's just slimy, like, like yeah. just listening to them. Um, but that's my final thought. on anything. Any other closing thoughts, boys, before we wrap it up? I do. I have a one closing thought just because I saw – so this is, this is the, the happier side of me on this podcast. I do want to mention – a pretty good movie that's coming out on Netflix next month. I saw the trailer earlier today and I was blown away by it. It's coming out May 21st. It's called army of the dead. Have you guys seen it? No. So it's a, it's a zombie movie. It's from, uh, it's from, uh, <laughs> hence the title. It's from Zack Snyder, right? So I know Zack Snyder doesn't come up with the best movies, but he, it's hit or miss with him. Uh, Jarvis, you might like it. I don't know how, how big of a fan you are of this guy, but Batista's in it. Little little yeah. wrestling uh, Batista. Um, it looks it looks pretty. It looks awesome. It's rated R. It's it's on Netflix. It's coming out May twenty first. It's basically a movie with zombies. Judging by the trailer, that they're contained in like Vegas. So they have like a big wall surrounding Vegas to like kind of keep them in. And there's a team of people led by Batista who's got to go into one of these casinos and casinos and recover something like $200 million or whatever it is based on the, of the commercial. So because it's Vegas, you see like in the, in the trailer, you see like a zombie tiger 
Uh, you see like zombie Elvis impersonators walking around. It looks gory as shit. It looks like it's a lot of great action. Very high kill count, Azar. You know how much I love that. <laughs> and best of all, best of all, based off of this trailer, when you watch it, the background song playing on the trailer is that of Kenny Rogers, Kenny Rogers, the gambler. It's the best. You guys got to watch it. All right. Uh, you Look now, up you Army of the my Dead. interest in the trailer. Okay. Yes. Watch the trailer. It's pretty good. All right. Sounds like a plan. My interest in the trailer. Looks like a, I, looks I, I like a new it. one. It's coming May 21st. We're going to, that's, I'm going to mark it down on my calendar. That's the, that's going to be the hot topic for the next podcast. Another family Happy movie night at the, at, exactly. at Big Meat's house. <laughs> Me, you know, you know, what we should tease next for the WWE. We should do the most, the, like the top wrestlers that we have that we think are the most overrated. So, like, like if you say Hulk Hogan, it was like, the, like the best from the '80s, or whatever. Who is like that level that you think just never ever should have got that high? Sting. Who? The most overrated. No way. No, don't All do right. it now. We are not starting another hour to this no, podcast. No, we gotta go. You can have <laughs> like, it was a closing thought, you monkey. No, I, I, <laughs> I just said it. Was it. A I just Listen, said it just to get just to get him right. We're gonna end the podcast. Sting. We're gonna He's end a the big podcast. Sting lover, and we're gonna go off on that. We've we've had debates over how good Sting is and how in in that old bed. So yes, yes, let's have that. Maybe on one where Azar likes to like just log off a little early, and then it's just you and I. Uh, or sign on an hour late. Yes, yeah. gonna have to do like a, a new a new podcast special, the wrestling edition for you guys. Anybody listening to me, wrestling edition? Yeah, yeah. Because who's actually Wardos. watching? Who's watching? So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, big do it. Jarvis. Thank you for jumping on. Yeah. We're wrapping it up. Uh, right. Everybody have a good night as usual. If you can get jump on Apple, give a review and SoundCloud or YouTube. We appreciate it. Until next time, take care.